stop the worship service. Uh, before we start, um, I have these devices.
Amen. Uh, please stand for our shoulders of pardon. From Galatians 4, verses 4 to 7. Paul, when the voice of time come by, God sent the voice of time.
Christmas is really all around. Uh, how beautiful it is to sing those uh, hymns and songs, right? So, I mean, so peaceful, so calm. And yet, uh, just the past week, we heard, uh, probably you probably haven't heard all over the news, what happened here in Jersey City. The shooting, you know, and how um, four or five people died, right? Because of that, six people. So, I mean, that's the total opposite of peace and joy. It's, it's silence, it's sorrow for other people. Uh, and so, we pray for that and and we all know, brothers and sisters, that even if there could be no guns in this world, there was to be chaos. There was to be fighting, there was to be killing. Right? So, ultimately, the problem is not gun control. The problem is self-control. And only the Spirit of God can bring that fruit of the fruit of the Spirit. And so I was asking us, a brother and said, so what do we need to really pray for? And I think the yeah, one thing we need to pray for is for the families to be strengthened. You know, one of the things that the enemy does is to destroy the family. Whether we're Christian or not Christian, once the family is destroyed and broken, even if you are so close to one another. And once that relationship started to have a reef, right? And that's when what happens, you know? Other people take side. They take side of you, take side of others. There will be chaos, there will be problems. And as Christians, our role is to be peacemakers. We are not really the one who causes the division. But of course, in terms of our witness as Christian, it could result to division because basically people who would not receive the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know, one thing that is really so sad is, I think it was, uh, no, it was John, John Calvin who said, you can be very theological in what you say, but very heretical in the way you live your life. Is that true? Right? You can be very theological, very good in theology, but your life sometimes, it doesn't really conform. To the truth. So we pray that the family will be strengthened. And look, at, look at even even us. If our family is not really together, right? I mean, there will be a big problem. So let's pray for that the strengthening of the relationship and family. And we know it's only the Lord Jesus, but it's only the Spirit of God can remove any hostility towards one another. You know why? That's the power of forgiveness. Within the family, there is real forgiveness. And that family will be stronger than before. Right? Even siblings, even brothers and sisters. Once you forgive one another, you will be stronger than before. So, 
the power of forgiveness comes only from the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we'll, we'll pray with that. And also another thing we can pray for is, you know, it's the spirit of Christmas. But we all know that this is an old, old story. And a lot of people are no longer moved by the message of Christ coming into the world and dying for our sin. Right? People are more excited with Christmas party. People are more excited with gifts. People are more excited with celebration and drinking, you know, and all this pleasure that comes. And all this uh, happy, you know, party going all over America and the world. But, you know, as a Christian, that, that, those are not the things that move our hearts. Those were not the things that moves the Magi to go to Jerusalem. Those are not the things that move Mary's heart to pressure all these things and ponder all these things. You know what moved their heart? It's the good news. It's this great joy. So, uh, I find it very ironic if Christians are more excited with the parties and rather than knowing that we have been saved from our sin. And that's our hope. That's our job. And so a simple celebration and gathering together will be nice. But if it is a, a more elaborate celebration, it's fine. It's, no problem. it's just what moves our heart is really the birth. So one time I went to a Starbucks to uh, get a coffee, and in their cup it says, Mary. I said, whoa, there. And then I, <laughs> it says, Mary coffee. Oh, it's not even Mary Christmas. It's Mary coffee. Right? So people are really, they really want to get the read of, of Jesus. And we always see it's always the reason for, for the season. So, yeah, so it's nice when we sing, you are still moved by the, by the message of the song. But if not, then we need probably to really pray hard. Because what really moves your heart? I think it's the fact that we are sinners, but God is so gracious to forgive us. And the better gift that we can give one another is forgiveness. Not destroying one another, not, you know, getting one another. Especially if you're a family. Uh, pray that God will build that relationship, a strong relationship centered on the Lord Jesus Christ and what He has done. So, we'll, we'll pray for that. You know, guys, we don't even know because these things are becoming more frequent. I talked to somebody and he said, can you imagine in the garden school, they're already conducting drills, you know, how to react, how to respond when calamity strikes like this, and crisis like this happen. And in the garden, and, and he was really very, afraid for, for his children, right? Little children in, in school. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, okay, let's pray for yeah, another, pray for comfort and Sen. How about that? Is it? Sen's mom. Uh, Sen's mom has Today, this is one. So, another reason for us guys to really pray to the Lord. And, yeah, he's standing where we do, and we're praying for comfort and provision. I know she can't she can really go home, it's, it's really hard for her. So, even as we see. You know, the spirit of Christmas here and coming. But be aware, guys, that there are other people who can even celebrate. 
with family members, I guess who are sick or alone, we have no one to, to turn to. We have a lot of uh, problems going on. And so we're just grateful to God that most of us are not probably going on to some difficulty. But can we just pray for them? Can we just remember? Bible says to, to those who are experiencing sorrow that we should see the hearts and the hearts. So, you remember the, the police officer who died? He has like five, five people, children. Right? So, join me as we pray. Is there any other prayer request? Oh, the close to the travel end this, this week, okay? Okay, pray for the Helen. Let me just write those things. Any other else? Is there any other ways who are traveling? Maybe next week? Coming week? Aside from either there or. Huh? Not sure. It's a very plan. Not sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. And send them the great word. It's the same. Okay. Happy birthday. Thanksgiving for Brother Peter. Okay. He's already home. For successful recovery. Oh, it's negative. Thanksgiving. Yeah, I think uh, last Sunday, Pastor, Pastor mentioned in the prayers that we were praying for Bada Peter. Can you imagine, he said that Bada Peter's uh, hemoglobin is, is so low that they are really, I mean, they are really shocked, like, how could he survive for like five or six months in that condition, right? And they said if it had gone lower than five, then there would be a more tragic scenario, you know, health problem. So, wow. So, brothers and sisters, I think it's also a reminder for us, don't, uh, you know, just be aware, don't take for granted the blessing that we have too, that we can go to doctors, that we can, you know, use your insurance and do a, an annual checkup, right? So, I mean, there is no prohibition in the Bible to go to, to the doctor and see uh, how we are doing, you know, in our, in our health, right? So, okay, so we're out Okay, that's it. So let's uh, pray together and join me as we pray. What I will do is I'll mention this uh, prayer request and if you can pray while you are sitting down so you can participate in the prayer. So let's just bow our heads and close our, our eyes and pray together. So first, pray, let's pray for the uh, family, especially those who uh, experienced the tragedy that happened here in Jersey City, the shooting. If we could just remember those uh, family and the loved ones of those who are victims of this uh, really sad and tragic 
But let's, let's just remember, pray for comfort. And of course, we pray for salvation in Christ. Lord God, we want to pray and we want to lift up unto you, O oh Lord, the family of those who perished, O oh Lord God, because of this uh, tragedy that happened last week in the city. Lord, we know that even this family right now, O oh God, they even if they want to celebrate the Christmas, the Lord, it is very difficult. The Christmas, the Lord God, will be filled with sorrow. Will be filled, the Lord God, with such emotional uh, breakdown, the Lord God. And so, Lord, uh, we don't know them. They don't know us, Lord God, but we know that prayer transcends all cultures, it transcends all boundaries, the Lord. It is our prayer even more, Lord, that may you continue to use the church that you have planted here in this specific place, oh Lord God, to continue to be a light and a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we know that even Christians are not accepted, oh Lord God, from trials, from tragedy. And yet, Lord, we know as Christians, as your people, when we go through this, to times like this, oh Lord, that we have hope in Christ Jesus. We do not grieve as unbelievers. Even though we grieve, oh Lord God, but we know our hope is firmly anchored in the power of Christ's resurrection. That we will be raised from the dead. When Christ returns, oh Lord God. And so, Lord, we lift up each and every family of this uh, war part of this tragedy. Lord, may you comfort them in any possible way, Lord God, whether uh, other churches will be able to live with them, whether people will be able, in new service of yours, to be able to, to bring the comfort, oh Lord, that comes from the good news, the message, oh Lord God. Of the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Be with the, the, the children who lost a father, the Lord God. The wife who lost a husband, the Lord. Husband who lost a wife. Parents who lost children, the Lord God. We pray that you will be with them, Lord. We don't know, Lord God, to reach out to them. But we're here, Lord. We are very comfortable in this place, the Lord God. And yet, the Lord, we know. We, we are able to help the Lord God, and we want to start it just by, by praying for the family and for those who are victims, oh Lord. We thank you. We do pray for the peace, oh Lord God, the peace of Jersey City, oh Lord. We do pray, oh Lord God, that people, Lord God, in the city, oh Lord, will have the opportunity, oh Lord God, to receive the call of God in their lives, oh Lord God. Because, Lord, ultimately we know that the problem is not external. The problem is inside our nature, O oh Lord God. We are by nature, we are children of wrath. We are by nature, O oh Lord God, we are violent people, O oh Lord. Even in our own family, we see, O oh Lord God, some uh, relationship problem. Even in our own family, O oh God, there is fighting going on. And so, Lord, we pray for reconciliation. We pray, oh Lord God, that somehow you will strengthen the family bands and the family relationship, oh Lord God, because the family, Lord, is the first source, oh Lord God, of this really security, oh Lord, in our emotions, in our identity, oh Lord God. And so, Lord, I pray, oh Lord God, that you will continue, Lord, to 
raised up and nurtured, Lord God, the family. And if there are opportunities, Lord, that this some of the families around the church, the Lord God, will be able to come, although we have the opportunity to reach out to them, Lord, may you grant us the wisdom. We have the message. We are responsible, O oh Lord God, in some way, O oh Lord God, we can really bring a message of peace, O oh Lord God, and we can reach out, O oh Lord God. And so, Lord, may you give us the boldness, now that we are seeing, O oh Lord God, that there is this chaos happening, O oh Lord, all over. We pray, O oh God, may you give us the burden in our hearts. We might be able to share our friends or one of our co-workers or, or even a stranger who knows the Lord God that our sharing that that particular sharing the Lord in the gospel will be the, the the beacon of light and the beacon of hope of Lord God for people who are lost Lord we know we need a new nature in Christ we need a new heart of Lord God and so Father we pray may you have mercy Oh Lord God, just as you have mercy on us. And here we are, Lord, we see our family, we're growing. We have peace, we have joy, oh Lord God. It's because Christ is the one who rules our family. So we thank you, oh Lord God. In a family where Christ rules, there is forgiveness, there is humility, there is loving one another. And so, Lord, as your people, May we truly be the light of Lord God, even to the Gentiles of Lord God, as we are also Gentiles. We thank you, Lord, have mercy on them, have mercy, oh Lord God, and be with, Lord God, those who are in authorities in New Jersey City, may we give them wisdom of how we pray, oh Lord God, may we learn to lead, oh Lord God, according to righteous ways, oh Lord God. According, O oh Lord God, to the principles and values, O oh Lord God, of your kingdom. We thank you, O oh Lord. We know, O oh Lord God, that darkness can be overcome only by light, O oh Lord God. But darkness will never overcome light. We thank you, O oh Lord God, because lie, O oh Lord, the only way we can get away or we can eliminate lies, O oh Lord, is by the truth of the gospel. So, Lord, we pray, may you shine your light, the Lord God, more and more, Lord, in this darkened world, this fallen world. You know our hearts, the Lord God, we have fallen into sin. And so, Lord, we need you, the Lord God, change our hearts, the Lord God, change the nature of people, the Lord God, and give them, make them a new person in Christ. Raise them up, the Lord God. Raise them from being dead in sin. Make them alive in spirit, O oh Lord God. It is only when the Spirit lives in us, Lord, that we can truly, Lord, live righteously and live godly and live with the love of Christ. We thank you, O oh Lord God. Also, we pray, Lord, for her in the heaven. God, know her situation, know her condition, O oh Lord God. Lord, only you can change heart, O oh God. Only you. Because a heart of stone will never listen, O oh Lord God, to the things of the Spirit. You need to change the heart, O oh Lord God. Remove that heart of stone and put a heart of flesh so that the Word of God can truly grow. And the Word of God will truly be planted Lord God, in a fertile heart, fertile soul. Lord, by your mercy, in your mercy, the Lord God, I pray, the Lord. May you humble her, Lord God. May you take away the pride in the heart of Lord God. Lord, even in your situation right now, alone. <laughs> she has a big family, the Lord God, that she feels very alone. God, you know we try our best, but Lord, if there is anything that we are missing, we pray as a family, may you forgive us. May you, she truly see the Lord God, the light of Christ. Maybe not
that from our family, Lord. We pray that you send some send a friend, a person, Lord, that who will bring the message of good news. But ultimately, Lord, only you can open our heart. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, let's pray for Addis Ani. Please join me in praying for her. Pray for comfort, pray for provision. Pray specifically for Abyssinia. You know what she's feeling right now. Lord God, there are some members in our church, so Lord, when these things happen in their family, Lord God, they can't even be with their family. They can't even be there, for Lord God, to provide profit and encourage them, or just to be there, for Lord, for their family. Some of us, Lord, may not even know what is, how is the feeling, and Lord, be with our sisters and you know, Lord God, her faithfulness. You know, Lord, how she devoted her life serving you, serving the church, serving the body of Christ. And yet, Lord, at this time, she cannot even be there for the family. But Lord, I pray that you, or, uh, you would orchestrate everything, Lord God, so that uh, the family will have a blessed time. So that there is an opportunity for the good news to be preached, for the good news to be shared, even in the funeral service. Lord, may you be the one to open the door. May you lead them, O oh Lord God, that truly, so Lord, may you lead them to Christ. Because our sure hope is in Christ Jesus. And Lord, there were moments and times that I was sending to share the gospel with her mom. Lord, that I only you know, oh Lord God. Lord, we thank you. I'm sure, Lord, there are those times that the gospel, Lord, will be the seed of the gospel is planted in our heart. So God, be with the whole family, be with the Sandy, oh Lord. I pray that even in this dark time, oh Lord God, she will find the dreams of hope, oh Lord God. May you give her assurance, O Lord, may you speak to her for that. And also, this is a reminder for us, Lord. We also want to pray for our loved ones, because we have no idea really, Lord God, when will be the time for them to also go. But Lord, help us. May you, Lord God, have mercy on our loved ones as well. Brothers and sisters, let's uh, give thanksgiving to God. For Brother Peter and thank the Lord for sustaining me. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. You have spared Brother Peter, O Lord God, from a very serious illness, O Lord God. We thank you, O Lord. We are all aware, O Lord God, that no one among us is exempted, O Lord God. Some of our brothers and sisters, they go through a difficult time of sickness. No less, o Lord. Some are being spared. But Lord, in all of this, one thing we know, that if we walk in the Spirit, then all things, O oh Lord God, will work for the good of those who love you, and those who are called according to your purpose. And for those of us, O oh Lord, who are not walking in the Spirit, sometimes times like this, O oh Lord, can be a wake-up call for us, O oh God, so that we turn back to you, and I pray, O oh Lord God, if there is a moment
moment in our life, O oh Lord, when you will give us a wake-up call. I pray, O oh Lord, that we will turn back to you. If we need to repent of our sin, O oh Lord, give us, Lord, your mercy and grace. Help us to be to be truly humble before you. But we're grateful, Lord, for Brother Peter. I guess you have worked in both ways, O oh Lord God. You have brought the family closer to you. You have brought the family closer to one another. And also, Lord, I pray that this will bring a message also to the whole family, that there is nothing in this life that is really sure. We may be healthy today, but Lord, we don't know, oh Lord God, what tomorrow may bring. But we know who holds tomorrow. It's our Savior, it's our Lord Jesus Christ. So Lord, we also would like to pray for those who are traveling this week, oh Lord God, wherever they will go, Lord, in California and other places. God, may your mercy and travel be upon them. We pray for safety, oh Lord God, and may you bring them back also safely, Lord, to their families and also to the community of faith here, Lord God. We thank you, oh Lord God, and also be with those uh, sisters with like Sister Beverly, praying for healing, Lord God, for skin glasses, Lord. I pray that you would also give her the wisdom, the Lord, for any medical treatment that would be able to help the Lord God. Yeah. Lord, we thank you. We praise you, the Lord God. Yeah. We just want to exalt your name, O oh Lord, and thank you for this opportunity that we are here gathered together. There is peace in our heart. We sing songs to you, O oh Lord God. Yeah. We can sing hymns to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity, for this moment of peace. Tranquility, O oh Lord God, uh, calmness and quietness in our spirit, O oh Lord God. Uh, I pray, O oh Lord God, uh, that we will truly find our rest in you, that we can rest in your grace, O oh Lord. And even as you speak to us through your word, O oh Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, that you will move our hearts. It will move our hearts. It will cause us to wonder again, Lord, but the powerful message, O oh Lord God, uh, of the good news. That when we realize, O oh Lord, that a Savior has been born, O oh Lord God, for us sinners, O oh Lord God, our only hope in life. And if Jesus did not come, we will all perish in our sin. But Lord, we pray, speak to us, refresh our hearts, O oh God, reorient our hearts back to you, O oh Lord God. And today we will be like the Magi, O oh Lord, who said, We have come to worship the King. We thank you, Lord. We offer to you all these prayers. And we pray for peace and comfort for our brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
my uh, delight to have seen uh, some of my uh, students two days ago when I was uh, playing in gospel. We have with us uh, Winston Junior, Tony Kuboy, it is a wonderful wife. Kuboy, Kuboy. Thirty five years ago, I was just uh, around ten years old, and uh, you would frequent our church. Uh, nice to see you. And also, DJ, yeah, thirty years old, get with us. Peter, with two kids, I remember when we go to the house several times. And it's my joy to be able to again be with you and. Uh, it's the gospel is very good. It's to the delight of the pastor's heart to see you all in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. As I approach my uh, 76 years, I think, now, it's to give you the grace and the strength to see you all and witness your glory in the world, now that we have your family. Amen. Let us have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you, God, for your sanctifying presence today, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. At the end of God, we truly be edified once again. By the commanding of God of your good news, Lord. Always, O God, piercing the hearts, enlightening the minds of God, establishing us in the faith, knowing, O God, the words shall never, O God, perish. The heaven and the earth shall all be gone, but your word will be established forever and ever. So today, O oh God, we thank you, Lord, for so many wonderful, O oh God, miracles you have, Lord, a feeling to the church, O oh God, that you have established in Jesus' city. Thank you, O oh God, for the life of Brother Peter, having that uh, dreadful disease, O oh God, of cancer. Yet, oh God, thank you for the prayers, the perfect prayers of the inner people of God. That today, Lord, we have seen again your hand moving, oh God, wonderfully for the complete healing of Brother Peter. That today, oh God, we are together are thankful, oh God, for the answer to prayers. Even, oh God, for uh, your calling the mother of uh, Sally, there is lamentation of God, but there is also, oh God, joyful celebration, knowing, oh God, that she heard the gospel, the good news, Lord, and even today we know that uh, uh, Sally, oh God, is able, oh Lord, to send the message of God. Across ministries, Lord, to reach the heart. We thank you, O oh God, for the surety of those who are in Christ Jesus to be in heaven. And thank you, O oh God, also, for we know in this diverse generation, the darkness of God that prevailed in this world, O oh God, shall be of that taken out by the light of the word of God. And the beautiful thing of the four words, Lord that we celebrate today, that is for God mighty and powerful, the world becoming flesh. That is the essence of Christmas, O oh God. The word, the Lord Jesus Christ, becoming like us, O oh God. That He, Lord, also has given us the charge, preach the gospel in season and out of season. Correct those who are doctrinally in error, O oh God. Warn those who will be using. 
exhort those who are growing in the faith, O Lord. Do it, O God, with great patience and careful instruction and teaching. For a time will come, O God, a time will come when people will no longer, O God, be able to hear the orthodoxy of the right doctrine of God, but would rather to receive a teaching that it is the ears. Believing rather the Creator, the creation of God, than the word that comes from the Creator. And so, O Lord, move us to God that we may be able to stand before the throne of God. According, Lord, to your wonderful of God, gift, O Lord, the gift of life may you more each one of us, Lord, to be with you. And give us to God the faith that is in our hands. The faith of God that you, O God, put into our disposal, that you move, O God, the heart that is, O Lord God, darkened and in, O God, in this pressure of your will. Yet, O God, there is hope in Christ Jesus, we know, that the sanctifying the Holy Spirit, O God, is able, O God, to turn a heart to respond to the heart of flesh, knowing, Lord, this is God who calls us, Lord, as your own Abraham and the rest of God of the prophets in the Old Testament, as well as all of God, the disciples in the New Testament, even in this present generation, your call of God shall, of God, be in fruition. And I thank you, God, for those people who have come, of God, and worship you together in this place. We thank you, God, for the Christ's name. For the people of God, say, Amen. Church, we remember the message last Sunday. The message last Sunday is found in Genesis chapter 5. Or Genesis chapter 15. What is the, what is the message? Abraham believed the Lord. That was the preaching of Pastor John. Abraham believed the Lord. Amen. So today, I would like to continue <coughs> with what Pastor John actually started in the life of the patriarch Abraham. And so I would like you to see the thing that we have going here today. When God calls, I want you to pause for a moment. When God calls, and my theme and text is in Genesis 12, verses 1 to 2. And it reads, The Lord Jehovah Yahweh says to Abraham, Get out of your country. Get out of your family, from your family, from your father's house, and the land that I will show you. So I came to America, okay, to proclaim the gospel. And I know most of you came from the Philippines as well. Not because America is a land of what? Honey and milk. But because God told you to be able to be assured of your salvation as we come together to worship the life of God. Amen to God. Amen. Church. That is the reason why you are in America. Because if we look at the life of Abraham, from the name Abraham, Abraham, Abraham was in the land of plenty. He was in the land of poor when he received the call of God. And the second call of God to Abraham was in Haran. In order for Abraham to leave his country, which is a land of milk and honey, church, 
Rosie is not around, but I met Elmer, the brother of Rosie, and we were in a kind of exchange of messages. For I came from Saudi Arabia and worked there for almost six years. And Saudi was very rich. And Elmer, my friend, also worked in Saudi in Iraq. They were in the dredging actually of the river Euphrates. And he was telling me that Iraq at the same time is also very rich. So Abraham came from the land of milk and honey, and God gave him a call. Church, get out from Iraq. Lord, Abraham was actually contented and comforted by the, the way that the family were in that status of wealth, church. He said, get out from your country. When most of us came from the Philippines to come to America, with the sole purpose of growing in the knowledge of God's will. Amen. Amen. Not because of milk and money. The unbelievers, yes, I, I am in America to find myself enjoying all the riches of America and the affluence of wealth and health, but that is not the purpose. And even those who were born in other land or families coming to America for the sole purpose because there was a call for you. To grow in the knowledge and understanding who God is. In the name of the We know that Abraham from the pages of the book of Genesis is a wonderful study of the calling and the life of the God man named Abraham. He is the prototype. He is the prototype of every one of us Christians to represent us. So it's a good study to study Abraham as the example of the Christians, the father of all who believe in Christ Jesus. That's why there is a continuity as us young kids of the life of Abraham. I know in my Bible studies, you may be in people in the room and the rest, I'm ready to express for God in this study. And before God called Abraham, remember Abraham, he was an idolater like us. He was living in a pagan country, in a pagan city called Ur of the Chaldees, known as Iraq today. What do I know that? Joshua 24 verse 2. Okay. And the scriptures named the father of Abraham Terah and his brother Nahor or Nahor dwelt on the other side of the river and they served other gods. It's more G. God's plurality of God's that is spiritual. There was a need for Abraham to leave the rich country. Because no doubt Abraham was raised up in the family that worshiped idols as his parents did, especially to be devoted to a moon worship as his father was. Okay. The Lord says to Abraham, get out of your country. The reason why God took me out of the Philippines. I was enjoying my life in the Philippines. Many friends. Okay. And God sent me to Saudi Arabia. Why? Because it is in Saudi, in my bitterness, that God called me and saved me to be who I am today. 
living my old life and receiving a new life in Christ Jesus. Amen. So I want you, my dear fellow Christians, to understand you came to America or you were raised in other countries to come to America and find yourself growing in the knowledge of God's calling unto you. That is why I pray that in this church we have that doctrinal and moral purity of the church in the doctrine that when God calls to believe in our last teaching in the Lord. What is the description of an Amorite letter describing poor or corrupt in the 20th century BC when Abraham spent most of his time is given as follows. Number one, there were pigs, F-I-G, pigs in the mines. Wow! More plentiful than water with its wine. Look at this. Many big trees, a lot of honey, and plenty of oil. All the woods were upon its trees. Barley, the barley, barley is, is used for making tea. Okay? Barley was there, and without end, all the cattle and the herds were plentiful. Wow! The land of poor where Abraham lived and enjoyed his life was a land that was milk and honey. And God called Abraham, leave, leave, get out from, the, from that town. I want you to actually see for that. So Abraham again was a picture of a wealthy merchant financially doing well in the country was rich and fertile country but then God speaks Abraham GG the fact is can you hear the gospel? be there can you hear the gospel? So the way that you are saved is when God calls you. Okay? So again, in Genesis 26, as we up to the left bit, in Genesis chapter 12, God called Abraham and promised to bless him and his children and descendants. So Abraham was saved by the call of God. Amen. How about Isaac, the son of Abraham? Genesis 26. God appeared to Isaac. See? In the same way he appeared to his father Abraham. Okay? And he said, I will bless you including all your children and your descendants. Genesis chapter 21. How about Jacob? Let's go to Jacob. Genesis 25. God appeared to Jacob and he spoke and said, Your name shall not only be Jacob, but Israel. Our old page may be the name that speaks of our own nature, but now when God called us, giving us a new nature, our name now is a brand new name written in the book of life of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why we speak. 
fit in this in this pulpit God's divine predestination. Pastor Albert, are you again preaching predestination? Yes. Because grace without predestination is not grace but a false grace. What? Yes. People say I'm saved by grace, but I do not believe that God is calling me or predestinating me to be elected is not actually biblical. In a sense, calling to death. That is why I said when God calls you, no individual person right now in this actually wonderful sanctuary who profess to be Christians have not received the call of God. Amen. 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 <clears throat> now, Pastor, are you telling me that the call of God is when God speaks to me, like Abraham and Jacob and Isaac and Moses? He said, Who are you, Lord? Moses, Moses, remove your sandals. You are stepping on holy ground. So, so, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Yes, there is a distinct divine call that comes to every fully Christian of the Lord this time. Yet, remember, Lydia, when she was praying with almost 11 or 10 women, when Paul and Silas came to deliver and proclaimed the gospel to them, then the scriptures and the Lord opened Lydia's heart. There was a divine call in the heart of Lydia. Second Thessalonians says to their king, God saved us because of his divine mercy through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, work of the Holy Spirit, and belief upon the truth through the calling of God through the scriptures. Amen. So we must be very careful to be able to give the full doctrinal truth, to be able to maintain the purity and the moral values of the church that is now actually established in this wonderful place. And so you must often give him to portray the divine sovereignty of God in his calling based upon who he elected the doctrine of election. You would not hear in any church today in this place because we do not believe in the doctrine of election, in the doctrine of God calls his people. As he called the great apostles, as he called us to Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel has to run to Eli and said, Sir, did you call me? I did not call you, Samuel. Go back and continue to be rest. And again, God called Samuel in the fourth time because sometimes we're calling to God. Is that they actually so clear to us because we are they bogged down with so many things? God will continue to call you till the time you find yourself in the good teachings of the scriptures. So it says, it's a rest of their thing. Again, I repeat. The Lord be praised because of His mercy before the foundation of the world. Okay? We were able to come to the Lord Jesus Christ through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit and the belief upon the truth. And because of this, He called us to Himself. Very clear. <coughs> Very clear. Very clear. God called us. 
And he said to Abraham, leave your country, okay? get out from your country, from your family, Lord, from your father, family, yes. Because Terah, the father was the one most first. He died in the land, in the land. That's why the second call of God came to Abraham, leave your father now. Sometimes it pains us that we to be called by God and we look at our parents. We cry because they have to live there. How beautiful are the feet of those who proclaim the gospel and you are part of that. There is a chance for you. It is actually a call of God to proclaim the gospel whether in season or out of season. To correct people who are wrong, to rebuke people who could be to sin, to encourage people, let like young people to grow up in the faith, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, in all the teachings of the scriptures, with great patience and careful teaching. Because soon the time will come when we will start the work of the of the man of God, of the Son of Man. No one but no one but only the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, leave your country and I will bless you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and your descendants and make you a great that you will be a blessing. And yet, because God is not trying to 
make a choice before time. Okay? And definitely make an election when Paul was being elected. So, elite, so we will say by our intelligence or our humility or our actually looking for Christ. Excuse me when you say that. We will say only because of God's particular grace. You were sown by Christ in the midst of your running away from Christ. Maybe they like the church that is actually so many to hear the promises of God that will be blessed financially, will be blessed by with help, be blessed like Abraham in the land of God, like in America, before he blesses the prosperity gospel. I was given actually uh, even my loved ones would not believe. When I was saying about, they say that I am attacking other churches when I will actually uh, uh, give you all the wrong doctrinal teachings of a particular church that need to be exposed because even the greatest modern person who actually walks and has not done any matter nor having, having done any but even the worst person if there was one Christ actually was very strong to even actually put to an understanding those modern person who truly follow the law and they believe and they do the law and Christ woke up to you Pharisees, the most pious actual people on earth who are obeying the law, but the biggest actually walk and curse God gave this morally actually clean persons, the Pharisees and the scribes and the teachers of the law was the same for them because morality cannot save you. Nothing can save you, only by the blood of Christ, through the word and mercy of God and Father in sending His Son, the Word becoming flesh. He came to seek and to save those whom God has given to Christ Jesus as His gifts to His Son. And we thank you, we thank you Lord, because we are the greatest people of God, though who we are before. And we are the sought by Christ. And we give it the Holy Spirit and we give it the gift of faith that we will be able to understand only by grace and just that we were really saved. Because God told us. Amen. <coughs> God told us. The answer is not for the poor. The answer is not in us. But for the grace of God, I go. The grace of God is the work of the of God. Salvation is of the Lord. So in our church again, we have to maintain the moral and doctrinal unity of the word of God in our church. You as we are. According to Augustine, and I quote, without the destination, Okay. There is no grace. Let me say that again. Without election, there is no grace. Okay. Saint Augustine said, Without predestination, there is no grace by which we are saved. Predestination is that doctrine that God before the foundation of the world has eternally chosen those whom he intends to save. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. To the pilgrims, ah, who are we? We are pilgrims, strangers in this land. In the time that we go, we are strangers. Sometimes people fight over money. Oh Lord. 
I put in money. And I say this from all my experience. It pays us absolutely. Okay? To the pilgrims in all places, this is a scripture. We come from many countries from Poland, from the Philippines, from America. To the pilgrims in all places, elect. Wow. Gee, you are elected. Be boy. Be elect of God. Then you will get the Bible study. Okay. Be there. Right? And then, brother. Every time I pray, God, you 